Well, how many of you know how to drive a stick shift? You know that's okay. We've got hands going up all around. I think you're dating ourselves because we're not finding any of those anymore, are we? You know, okay, hands going down. Oh, no, no, huh? Yes. Uh, remembering how to drive a stick shift. Oh, I can tell you the very first time I learned, 18 years old, I was in Kenya, and uh, there was a wonderful uh, missionary's wife who said, I'm going to teach you how to drive this uh, stick shift. So we drove out into the grasslands, and she turned the car over to me, and I began to figure out the clutch and the gas and the stick shift, and that there was a combination that was necessary. I you know, didn't quite always find that at first. And so there was the jolt. There was the car rocking back and forth. There was the times when I'm trying to give it too much gas. I'm trying to take off and I'm in the wrong gear. And oh, wow, she had a lot of patience. I'm really grateful for that. But she inspired me and she kept saying, you can do this. And before uh, too long, I learned how to actually drive uh, the stick shift and how to put it into high gear. You know, because what I found out is that when my car is in high gear, it goes a whole lot faster than trying to go in first gear and try to speed down the grasslands or getting on the highway or wherever it may be. You got to get it into a high gear for it to really move uh, and to make that speed possible within our lives. You also can't start your car in high gear. That's another little challenge. You know, you've got to learn that you've got to work through those gears. You've got to make those shifts you got to work up from the low ones, and that has to, uh, you have to have that ability to get there to the high gear. Well, I'm illustrating to you this very principle in our life that what's really important for our faith is that we learn to get it into high gear. That we may need to make some shifts in our life to get to faith that's operating in high gear. You know, so quite often we're trying to start out and we're in the wrong gear. We're, you know, not learning how to actually get that momentum going. People always say to me, you know, I really want to be a person of faith. I want to have the power to believe for miraculous things. I would love to see prayers answered within my life. I want to feel this sense of the divine working in and through me. Well, today I'm here to help you by offering some insights on how to put our faith into high gear. And I want you to understand that many times people get a little impatient when it comes to praying and seeking results, praying and saying, I'm looking for answers, and we get a little impatient. And so we're kind of like little children who are anticipating Christmas, and we keep thinking, I want that Christmas present now. I want it now. I want it now. And not having the ability to be patient and waiting for it to happen in the right time. And you know what happens when we become impatient in our faith? What we're saying is, I don't have it. I don't have it. We're constantly saying, I'm impatient. And my impatience is saying, I want it, but it's not here. I don't have it. And so when we become impatient, we're actually operating in the wrong gear. We're actually operating from a place that says, I don't believe. I don't have it. I don't haven't received it. It's not here. And we say, well, wait a minute. In reality, isn't that true? But how about that we live from a spiritual perspective that is able us to see God is at work in miraculous ways, even beyond that which we may experience in the physical, and to know that God is doing some amazing things right here and now, even though our eye, our physical eye, may not be able to see it, but to see it with the eye of the spiritual faith. So let's go, let go of that impatience that says, I want it right now, I want it right now, I want it right now. And that impatience is what's keeping it from happening right now because I do believe that God answers prayer in the now and that prayers can be answered right in the moment. But sometimes that impatient attitude is what's holding back from that answer coming and unfolding for you in that right and perfect time. You know, here's where we find Scripture saying to us over and over again, in the acceptable time, it says, meaning in the right time, when all things have come together, that's when the, the things come into fruition within our life. So we really want to examine and ask ourselves, you know, how do we get there? How do we get to the right and perfect time in our life? How do we get to that moment when we know that all things are going to come together in alignment and the desire of our heart will be manifested? That which we're praying for will experience. How do we get there? So, you know, it... Uh, really comes through a moment of understanding some key elements within our life. First, you know that in everything, when you plant a seed, 
there's a period of gestation. There's a period of time when that seed goes into the ground. It's nurtured by the soil, the, the warmth of the sun. It's there, the water and the moisture all come into play, and that seed begins to experience that gestation period and bring forth growth and development, springing out roots and expansion, reaching up through the soil. So it is in life when there's fertilization of the egg. So it is within the womb. There's a period of gestation that we wait for the unfolding to take place within our life. And so we often have an idea about what this period of gestation should be. And we often think, oh, that period is someday. Someday. Let me tell you, we need to remove that word from our language because that someday concept, that someday word that we're speaking and concept that we embrace is always putting off it's faith that says, I don't believe it's happening right now. I don't believe that it can happen right now. It's going to happen someday, maybe further down the road. But I'm, you're not pulling and attracting and drawing into your life the manifestation that you want to happen right now because you're pushing it away with this someday. So we saw impatience saying, I kept echoing, I don't have it. And that's what the universe is hearing. That's what God is hearing. I don't have it. I don't have it. That's what you're experiencing through impatience. Then also what's happening then is this someday attitude is also keeping us from really experiencing the power of the manifestation or the answered prayer that we so desire. So what we do find is that that someday is actually we're trying to move quickly in the low gear. Yeah, we're, we're, uh, there's not enough energy into it because it's a someday attitude. But what about now? Let's go back to that because in Isaiah 49, 8, it says, In the time of favor, I will answer you. In the day of salvation, I will help you. So let's get to the time of favor or the acceptable time or the right time that all these scriptures are addressing. But is that right time? Because if we get there, we're going to be in high gear and we're going to usher in the miraculous happening within our life. We find scripture says that uh, there is a day of salvation for us, a day, a moment of great liberation within our lives. Salvation being that powerful word for us of understanding what is liberating us and setting us free from all the bondage of this world, all the physical limitations that we keep holding on to and focusing on that are keeping us from feeling this power of liberation. Well, there is a day, a moment, a time, in an acceptable time, a right time, when you are set free and liberated from all of that. And there's key components that come together to help us experience that fully. Like a seed that's planted in the soil, there are certain elements that are necessary. So we find like the soil is, needs to be nurtured and amended in many cases. We find that there needs to be water and there needs to be sunlight, etc. So it is in our spiritual life that there are certain elements that we need to, or components that we need to have in our life if we're going to see the right time, the appointed time, the perfect time, the day, the now of our salvation, of the liberation from all of the limitations of this world. You know, we focus so much on them and we put so much power into those limitations. Limitations that say, this is all I have. This is, I'm limited. Limitations that we keep echoing over and again. This is uh, my sickness. This is my, uh, my condition in health and it's limiting me. Uh, this is where I am and I'm feeling so unloved and I'm limited in this context. You see, on and on we go with echoing these thoughts that give power constantly to physical limitations in this world. How about if we stop giving power to that? And stop giving power in any way, in any thought. And we're going to find a true liberation moment, a day of salvation in our lives. And we're going to add then a key com some key components that the speed of the manifestation or the answer to your prayer happening will depend upon the availability of some key spiritual elements. So listen closely. Because I like to highlight some key spiritual elements that are so necessary. Just like the seed that's planted in the soil needs to have some key essential elements that are so necessary, so too 
we need these very same uh, sp some spiritual elements in our life if we want to usher in these manifestations. So uh, here are some of those elements that are going to help us. And the first one I want to highlight is that we need to begin claiming and speaking with confidence. I think a lot of people, when I listen to them, when they pray, there's a lot of maybe, hope, kind of, if it's possible, I'm not really sure, kind of words incorporated. Please, God, please, God, because I'm begging you, I'm pleading, I'm ju just doing everything I can to try to get you to listen to me, that kind of attitude within us. And there's not a sense of confidence because when we trust in this wonderful creative process of God's unfolding goodness, when we truly trust, there is a confidence. Now, if we don't have confidence, let's go back and ask ourselves, are we really trusting? Are we trusting with all of our heart? Have we come to that place? Because what happens is when you trust, there is such a confidence that another component happens in your life, you relax. You just relax. You're at ease. How important it is that we, you know, we, we go through life so much with stress, worry, tension in our body, and all kinds of fear and sense of, uh, you know, is this going to happen? I'm worried and I'm stressed and I don't know if it's going to work out or I don't know if my prayer will be answered. I don't know if God's listening. I don't know if I'll ever have this healing that I want. I don't know if I'll ever have prosperity and blessing financially. I don't know if any of these things are going to happen for my life. I'm just stressed. Wouldn't it be wonderful if you could just be at ease every single day of your life, confident, knowing that God is at work? That's a key component. When you plant the seed of your thought, your prayer, whatever it may be, there has to be an element of confidence, an air of trust that just allows you to completely relax, to relax so much that the Scripture would call it a Sabbath, a moment of rest, a day of rest. For in the creation process, we find on this, the six days of all kinds of unfolding, and on the seventh day, he rested. You see, because all of the uh, things have been put into order, and now it's time to rest and allow and trust and be confident in the unfolding of everything that has been spoken and creative and allowing it to do its wonderful work. Thought in prayer and we're really believing that God is at work right now, and we're trusting, well, then we can just simply rest because we're knowing that all the components, every element is coming together to see this be a reality within our world. You know, God's intention is for you to live in perfect peace. Not stress, not worry, not panic, but perfect peace. That's the component that's so essential, a confidence that God is at work 24-7 in the midst of your storms, in the midst of your trials, in the midst of anything that's going on in your life that you may feel like it's rocking your boat and you're wondering if you can make it through. When you have this wonderful confidence, a sense of trust, you will know, and in that knowing, that confidence, you'll be able to simply rest, move in great peace, operate in great peace, be in great peace stress-free. So we want to trust. Trust in what? Trust in this process. And this process is creative. Faith is creative. You are stepping out and launching. Faith is the substance of all these things that you are believing for. It's that energy that you're putting out when you say, I am praying and believing, I'm trusting God. We're putting out forth something in a creative process. And that this creativity is bringing together all the elements that will help you manifest so you're allowing the divine to work and pull together this and that and all these things that are coming together synchronistically to create the miracle that you're looking for in your life. So we want to have that confidence. The confidence that says, I think and I feel my desire has already come into fruition. My thoughts are filled with this. I know it's already done. Now, isn't that beautiful? 
Wow, doesn't that put you at peace? If you know, it's already done even before you ask. But it's because the scripture says God knows already the desire of your heart before you even ask. So God is already, the universe has already prepared everything. It's just you who have to release all this stress and fear and blockage and impatience, all these kind of things that we build up in our life that hold back from the answer unfolding within our lives. So one of the fastest ways for you to, shall we say, speed up the process, move things in your faith into high gear, is to simply begin to claim and know that all things are working together for good right here and now, and the desire of my heart is already manifested. It's already there. It's already for me. What you're doing in that is you are now shifting upward. You're moving your gear, shall we say, into the high gear. So what we need to do in our life is, first of all, let's make some shifts. Let's make some shifts. Let's make some changes in the direction of believing and releasing some of these things that we've held on for so long that are stressful, worrisome, and just begin to trust with a great confidence in the divine power and presence of God. What we do is we start to with a vision um, for the so-called future, and then we think and work in concepts of physical time. Well, what we want to do is we want to eliminate that, that we're constantly thinking in physical time. Like, I'm going to pray for this miracle, and it's probably going to take six months. You know? I'm going to pray for this miracle, and it's probably going to take two weeks. You know, I'm gonna, you know, you're putting a time limit on something. What if we were to say, I'm praying for this miracle, and it's happened now? And it's right now. Because I'm going to tell you, i got to remind you over and over again, we as human beings are thinking in linear time. The divine doesn't know time the way we know time. So when we understand that, we understand how when we're moving into high gear, how things can happen so beautifully for us within our lives according to our faith, according to these elements, these components that we're bringing to the table, that we're allowing that seed to be planted and that's being nurtured in how important it is. So 2 Corinthians chapter 6, 2 says, In the acceptable time, I listened to you, and in the day of salvation, I helped you. Behold, now is the time of favor. Behold, now is the day of salvation. So it's saying this acceptable time is now, right now. Oh, wow. What if we began to realize that and took on the answer to my prayer is here. It's right now. I'm not waiting years down the road. I'm not hoping and trying to believe. I'm believing that it's happening, and it's already happened, and it's coming to me. It's already occurred. The Spirit of God has already done this wonderful work. And by accepting this thought that the answer is already completed, it's a done deal, you know, we say, and so it is, meaning amen. Amen meaning it's a done deal, and so it is. What if we really took that to heart and said, that's right. That which we prayed for is already a done deal. What we're doing is then we're compressing time and eliminating that bridge from the future to now, and we're bringing that all together into one. Something beautiful that faith does in our life. When we begin to express it in that way, that it is already done. It's so what happens is we've eliminated this huge bridge between now and the future. Years ago, I had the opportunity to be in San Francisco, and I stood on the edge of the Golden Gate Bridge looking across the bay at the other side and thinking, wow, okay, this is going to be quite a little hike crossing this bridge. A long walk, got kind of windy, a little cold there, crossing over the bridge. I'm thinking, dang, wouldn't it be wonderful if there was a way that we just could forego the bridge and I could just get to the other side really quickly? I could eliminate this bridge and this tedious walk to get to my desired road dose destination. Well, that's the way it is in prayer to usher in that which you believe for into the now, into this moment. Let's get rid of the bridge. And let's just bring it in and compress time by our belief that it is already happening for us. Because when we do this, we no longer care about time, do we? We're not focusing on time. Because we're saying it's already done. It's already completed. It's already finished. That which I believe for my faith is so confident and so strong. My faith is already visualizing. It's already done. Suddenly, you no longer care about the time because it's already done. 
We feel that what we want or the desire of our heart is already happening. So that prosperity that you're seeking in your life, it's already happening. That health and wholeness that you desire, it's already happening. That wonderful manifestation of success in your business, your career, your life, your love relationships, whatever it may be that you are seeking and desiring, it's already happening. And so what happens is we don't desire as if we're still wanting something because we're feeling we already have it. I already have the answer. I already have it. People say, oh, you have it. Well, where is it? I know. And that knowing is what's ushering it in and re in removing that gap of that bridge that may be tedious to travel down in the journey of life. And it's ushering in the future and compressing it into this moment because we're in a mental state of living the answer. Living the answer. We're living it as if it is here. It is right here and now. And when we do, there's such peace, such joy, such contentment that happens in our life. We become relaxed and confident that as we just await the physical arrival of that answer to our prayer, we're confident. We're just relaxed. We're knowing. Isn't that wonderful? Would you be that kind of person that steps out in faith today and just says, I know the answer is there already. I'm so confident. I walk and believe and operate from the perspective that God has already completed it. And that which I desire is mine. Wow, what a transformation that is. So let's add another component to this as well. And that is, I'm going to invite you to bless and praise any experience you're going through, any experience of lack or any need or any difficult situation or any person who opposes you or any difficulty you may have with a spouse or a partner or any difficulty you may have or lack in your bank account. How about you start blessing it and, and praising it and shifting your whole attitude from, oh, how horrible my spouse is or how bad this is or how horrible this person is at work or how difficult this situation is or I will never find this job or I'll never get this. You know how we are in our thoughts? Let's stop and just start blessing it. Because to bless something is to invoke divine care over it. So I bless my enemy. Divine care is taking care of everything. I bless that. I bless this uh, difficult situation I'm going through. I bless it, and I know that divine care is watching over and providing for me in this difficult situation. I bless my bank account that may say, oh, my Lord, it's just so limited there, but I'm blessing it. I'm blessing it because divine care is operating over it. God is working in that way. And I am blessing in this wonderful way that also encourages praise, which is to glorify or uplift. So I see God is at work. God is at work in my health, and I bless my health right now. I bless this body and every cell within it. I bless every good thing within it. I bless it and bless it and allow divine care to unfold in a beautiful way within it. And I praise the wonderful working of good, of God, of the power and presence of divine at work within this situation, within this scenario. And I speak well of it. Now, that's a key component. Start speaking well of everything in your life. Not, oh, my life is the pits. My bank account's the pits. My job is the pits. Uh, my partner is the pits. My spouse is the pits. Uh, you know, I, we go on and on and on. We think we just live in deeper, deeper, deeper pits in our life and digging ourselves even deeper in those pits. But when we begin to speak well, we begin to an ignite that power of blessing and glorifying that begins to uplift and the divine care begins to go at work within it. So not only are we shifting in high gear through our confidence not only by letting go of our impatience, not only by seeing it as if it's already completed, not only walking in this wonderful faith that allows us to relax and to rest and to Sabbath in life, to be at perfect peace, but also we're blessing every scenario along the way. We're blessing it. You lost that job? Well, bless it. Bless that employer and say, thank you, because that just means a door is opening up for something better. You... uh 
had a difficult situation, a flat tire or whatever it may be in your life, and you realize, hey, I bless that. I'm grateful for that circumstance and that situation because it's moving me into something better. And each and every day, if we walk and say, it's this wonderful moment, but there's something better that this divine care is taking me through because I bless it. I bless it. I speak that blessing, that goodness upon every situation, every scenario, everything, health, wholeness, relationships, etc. What's going to happen is we're going to start moving into high gear with our faith. Today is the day. Now is the moment. Wouldn't you love to see prayers answered in this moment, right here and now? It's possible. It's very possible. And it's what the Spirit of God intended for our lives. It says, ask and you shall receive. It didn't say, ask and wait six months and you might get it. Or ask and wait two years and you might get it. Or ask and wait and maybe before you die, you're lucky you'll get it. It says, ask and receive. It's intended to be just that kind of automatic experience within our life. Yes, there's this gestation period, but we remove that. We remove the bridge. We condense it, shall we say, and it begins to happen just like that. Like the nine-month experience of the birthing of the baby happens just like that. When we begin to hold in our mind a a concept or an idea, and we say, I'm believing with faith it's happening. It can happen just like that. That gestation period happens because all the elements, all the components that are necessary for faith to be moving into high gear are working in your life. So today I'm inviting you. Let's make a shift. Let's move into high gear with our faith. Let's begin to be people who are manifestors in this world, bringing about a life of faith that others may see and the good works that you're producing and bring great glory to God. Be truly that which the divine purpose has set you on this planet for, to be that light that glorifies God by putting that faith into high gear that says, I am trusting, I am knowing, I'm confident, I'm at perfect peace, it is done and so it is, Wrap it up. Let's go on home, shall we say, attitude in every situation in life. And I am not worried because God is in control. And today is my day of salvation. Amen.